morning, everybody. It's Pam Schmidt from Pouring Artists International. I want to put together this quick video to compare different papers used in with alcohol inks. And before we get started, I want to show you also, there's been some discussion on a couple of my alcohol ink Facebook groups or pages that talk about the differences between the papers, which is what I'm going to do here. But they were also talking about UPO paper on the roll. I do have several rolls of the UPO paper because I do teach alcohol ink classes. And what the problem is, is getting it to lay flat like these papers here. So I do want to show you, I cut a bunch of it off the roll and I have been laying it under books for days and days. I did take one piece of paper out and cut it down into small pieces after I messed it up so I wanted to use it for background papers which is what we have here but if you notice you can see that there's still a curve on it you can see right here see how it goes up and down like that so when I work with it I actually have to tape it down onto my surface if I did not and this is some of the issues we have sometimes in the class is it pops off from under the tape and curls back up. So the problem you're going to have is once you lay your inks and your alcohol, it's just going to run off because of the curve, you can see. So I do love UPO paper, but when you get it on the roll, that's what you're going to have to fight with. Now these turned out beautifully, but again, they were taped down and secured. Okay, so we're going to go over a few of the papers. We're going to try some different things because the discussion that I'm making this video for was I made a comment when I had one of my representational art pieces done, which was a Kingfisher bird. I named him affectionately King Bluey the First. I did him originally right here on Nara, Nara paper, N-A-R-A -A paper. I was very impressed with this paper because I was trying it out for the first time. I got that and Pix's paper. I already had the photo papers here and I already had UPO. So I kept hearing about these two, so I ordered them and wanted to try. I picked up Nara paper for no particular reason when I did King Bluey. And I found when I did mess up in his feathers or it came out beyond the outline, I wiped it up with alcohol and it literally erased completely. So when I mentioned that on one of the pages, uh, that was the question that alcohol inks were completely erasable. So I wanted to try all these papers and to show because everybody can learn from a visual, uh, even myself. So this will be the first time that I'm doing this as well, just to show you. So what I'm going to use, we're going to start off with a Staples photo paper, which is glossy. I cannot use the backside because you can see all the writing on there. I could use it, I suppose if as long as I did dark enough colors that would cover that up and at least use it for a background or for scraps. So we'll start with the Staples photo paper. We'll move on to the Kirkland, which is the brand name for Costco. And this is the glossy side of the photo paper. Right there you can see the gloss. But what a lot of people use is the back side of Kirkland. It's matte and it feels a little similar to Yupo, not quite but it is a matte finish and it works much better than the glossy side. From what I understand from years ago doing research, the glossy side of photo paper is basically clay based and clay, as we know, is porous. So you'll see once I lay some inks down, I only have but a couple of seconds to move them, but not even move them like we would want to move them in alcohol inks. And then we're going to move on to the UPO paper, which you can use on both sides. It's the same. And the same thing with the Pixis and the Nara paper. Right there. Okay, so let's do this real quickly. Move these out of the way. I'm going to start with the Staples photo paper. Zoom in just a little bit for you. I'll take that off for the moment. Now I'm just going to use an ink pouncer. I have three colors here, yellow, blue, and red, because we know the primaries can make their own colors. And they're from Ranger. Now please know that I'm not sponsored by any company by any means. 
So how this turns out, this turns out. I can tell you from experience that right now my personal favorite is the narrow paper. So there's the three colors on here. I'm gonna put it straight on the Staples photo paper. So I'm adding my color. Now I want to add some, I've got 91% alcohol. And you can see I'm not getting anything. See, I've, now it's stained completely underneath, even though I've got that top layer. I won't discard this in any way because I can still use it as a background. But you can see that we have the original pouncing and we have the swipe marks and none of it is going away. I'm going to grab a paper towel, a clean paper towel. Let's uh, give that a spray and see what happens. A little bit of movement, some on the paper towel, but it's stuck there. This is it. All right, so we see that. That's the staples. Let's move on to the Kirkland photo paper glossy side. So here we have a reload of some colors here. And again, this is the glossy side, so let's go in there. Tap, 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 swipe, swipe, swipe. We can already see we're going to have the same issue. It's not moving. We have no nice spatter marks. Let's go in with the paper towel. And again, exact same thing as the Staples photo paper. All right, we'll doctor that up later and use it for a background. So let me turn this Kirkland over. We have the back side, which is not glossy. So I'm just going to add some here to it. Now already I can see and feel a little bit of a difference. Now let me see what happens when we spray it. Oh, at least we get some movement. That's what we want. Let's swirl it around a little bit. Excuse me. Spritz it again. There we go. So that's that works well. That's the back side of the Kirkland photo paper. We'll put that aside. So that that does actually let me uh, use a paper towel and wipe it real quick. Let me spray it again. And let's see what happens if I've made a mistake. Well, the ink comes off, which is good, but we're left with the stain behind. Let me spray it again, see if maybe it just needs a second cleaning. Okay, so all of the ink did come off, but it left this stain. And that's okay, because you can always ink right over it. But so far, that's wonderful. All right, let's move on to the Yupo paper. Same on the both sides, so it doesn't matter. And this is what I use in all of my classes right now. Let me reload some ink. Okay, now that I've reloaded the brush, or the pouncing tool, I should say, and we're on the Yupo paper. I'm gonna pounce it around. Oh yeah, see, this is buttery paper. You can see the difference blends nicely. So while I'm up here, sorry about moving that. Let me give it a little spritz. Yeah, you can see how it moves nicely. Opens up. Layer on top. Awesome. So let's say I've messed this up now. Well, it all comes off, but this is where we have a problem. And another reason I'm doing this was because after I did King Bluey, I worked on a hummingbird and I just grabbed Yupo paper, not thinking that there would be a difference between that and the Nara paper. And when I did make a mistake, 
on the UPO paper, this is what I got. I erased it, but it left me with this stain behind, which ended up being useless. So I ended up covering it with a bunch of different paints, or alcohol inks, I should say, and that's how I created these backgrounds, was because this became useless to do my hummingbird on. So again, UPO paper is amazing, but it also stains. So we'll put that aside. We'll go on to the Pixis paper, and we'll see how that works. Again, it has the same buttery, smooth feel as the Yupo. The inks go on beautifully, just like that. They mix nicely. Let me give it a schmutz there. There we go. Beautiful. And now let's erase that. Now this feels actually different. It has the buttery feel, but you can see how it's doing that. It's very dry in comparison to wiping off Yupo or the Nara paper. It's very dry. When I'm on the Yupo paper like this, very smooth. I could go in either direction. You could see nothing is happening. But this one, it does pick, it does do that because it's catching. And again, I cannot get it clean. That's the best. That's the Pixis. Still a good paper, but it does feel a little bit different, a little drier. All right, and finally, let's go on to the narrow paper. Let me load up the inks again real quick, just a little bit more. Buttery smooth, very nice. Blends nicely. Okay, sorry, my phone keeps cutting out. So here we have it, it's actually dry. So I'm going to reactivate it. There we go, still workable. Now let's see if we can clean this off. So I'm gonna grab another paper towel. It's still opening up the inks. I have a tiny bit of Stain, not as much, and I'm surprised actually because when I did have a mistake on King Bluey, it came off 100%. And online, it does say on the packaging 100% stain free. Very faint, still something there, but very, very faint. Okay, I guess that's probably it. So there's the Nara paper. There's the Pixis. There's the Yupo. I won't even put the card stocks on there. So there's the three side by side. Even though it's very, very faint, I would still go with the Nara paper myself because that can be covered up easily. See if anything else is going to come off. The only thing coming off is whatever residual there was from the towel. Well, there you have it. There's the stain factor for all three. The Pixis, the Nara, and the Yupo. I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow the channel. Have a good day.